you have already seen VLAN. Uh, we configured VLAN in the networking section. But let me take you back again to show you that what is VLAN all about. Here on interfaces and in interfaces, we'll go to devices. And in devices, you can see here VLAN. So we created two VLANs here. And in these VLANs, you can see one was for the home lab and one was for the guest Wi-Fi. So why you create VLANs? Creating VLAN is extremely important. It could be done for various reasons. It could be done because of the security. It could be done because of bandwidth control. It could be because of segmenting the networks. So depending upon how you want to use it. Now, for example, multiple group of servers, there are some servers uh, facing the public, some are internal servers. So I might create two VLANs, one for the public servers, one for the local servers. I might also create the VLANs for uh, different departments. For example, you have finance department, sales department, IT team, developers team, then you have some uh, support guys, and then you have the HR department. So where you want to make sure that their traffic is isolated and their network is isolated from other networks. So you can create VLAN for that purpose. And then of course, you can also do the traffic segmentation. For example, if you have the IP phones on your network. So you want to separate or you want to segment that network. Uh, you can have the VLAN for IP phones. For voice, you can have the VLAN for data. You can have VLAN for videos. For example, you don't want the traffic of uh, CCTV camera where you want to, of course, do the recording. So all of those are connected physically on the network, but you will create a VLAN so that that traffic will be separated without creating the congestion on the network. So there are various reasons why you should go for a VLAN. Uh, you can, of course, create multiple VLANs and uh, these VLANs can be then configured on the switches also. If you have physical switches, so every port can be assigned as a VLAN. You can create the trunk port, tagged VLAN, untagged VLAN. Once the VLANs are configured on your switches, you can have the trunk port connected to your OpenSense so that it will pass all the packets. Another way is that if you are having multiple physical interfaces on your OpenSense, you can then create the virtual or VLAN to the physical port and then that physical port can work as a separate network. You first of all have to decide that what kind of VLANs you have to have. Then every VLAN will have its own subnet. These subnets will be isolated. You can of course do the routing between them or you can keep them isolated where the traffic will not pass from one VLAN to another VLAN. It could be, for example, if a file server, which is not required to be accessed by department. So you can, of course, create uh, VLANs. If any of the system is compromised on one specific VLAN, uh, other network or and other departments will not be affected by that. It will be a good idea to create the VLAN for that purpose. So as I mentioned, there are multiple reasons why you would need to create a VLAN. So if you have understood why you have to create the VLAN, then we'll go to the VLANs. Here you have seen already that I was trying to create a VLAN. We have already created VLAN. So I can then create, of course, multiple VLANs. This was VLAN 0.10, which was for the uh, staff Wi-Fi. And then I created VLAN uh, 0.20, which is guest Wi-Fi. I could create 0.30 public servers. Then I can say for the developers and so on. So we have now created the VLAN. We have seen the physical interfaces, how the physical interfaces are working. Now we'll be continuing to next video.